Mexico's famed Popocatepetl volcano continues to spew ash and gas onto nearby towns and villages. Officials are getting ready to evacuate residents. Mexico's famed Popocatepetl volcano spews smoke and ash on nearby towns and villages. Officials are now considering the possibility of evacuations and are mobilizing to prepare for such measures. Last month, Mexico's National Center for Disaster Protection raised the alert level for the volcano to its third highest on a seven-step scale. Some local residents say they are scared of a possible eruption, but don't have the money to move away. It frightens us, but where shall we go? To go to the city costs money. Here we live in fear, but we are holding on. Popo, as the volcano is commonly known, has spat out mile-high clouds of ash and smoke several times this year. The last major eruption was in the year 2000, causing over 40,000 people to flee their homes. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. If you'd like to, my website is ggnonline.com. Um, also on YouTube, DDarko2012 and 2013 on my YouTube channel. So, all right. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware of the earthquake that took place in Italy. There was actually aftershocks there, so it's still uh, still kind of rattling over there in Italy. But then we have uh, this going right here: 6.4 magnitude earthquake hits northern Argentina. So it says there were no immediate reports of casualties or damage from the earthquake and then it goes on and says back in March 5th a 6.1 magnitude earthquake also uh, hit northern Argentina yeah I don't know if you guys remember when I first covered this Mexico volcano uh, they, I think it's they call it Popo down there but uh, when they first started talking about evacuations that was about a month ago so they're not they're not just starting now to consider evacuating it's been going on for about a month now but uh, I guess it's continuing and um, just a quick side note here for on Press TV, it says um, for financial news, financial failure, Moody's downgrades, credit rating of nine Danish banks. So that's some more recent news for, for um, the economy in Europe. Okay, so moving on, dolphin death, still a mystery. Debates continue to cloud over the cause of death of more than 900 dolphins and other sea life in Peru. It says here that this orca, this uh, conservation of aquatic animals, states that they are certain of the cause of deaths. Well, I don't think I would ever claim to be uh, certain of what the cause is. I mean, there's so many different things that could be happening. Uh, you have the Japan uh, tsunami disaster. You have the BP disaster. You have uh, the aerosol uh, program, i.e. chemtrails, along with the HARP program, uh, buzzing, uh, basically heating up the ionosphere. Uh, they're, they're, cha they're messing with the weather patterns. So, I mean, it's not just the jet streams that are being manipulated and causing a lot of the uh, you know crazy weather and stuff like that, uh, but also the Gulf Stream. So, and I'm sure the whole BP thing doesn't help either. So, uh, there's a lot of reasons. Um, and then of course you have pole shift that you can throw in there as well. But it goes on. It says the group suggests seismic exploration, which uses explosives to vibrate the ocean in search for oil. So they're saying that it's that that has caused the trauma. Uh, to the dolphin's eardrums leading to decompression sickness so that's still that's another good uh, that's a, still another good reason possibly right a virus was ruled out through blood tests bacteria was ruled out through cultures viable samples so the Peruvian government uh, which as of right now it just declared a state of emergency over the miners that are protesting say they counter those claims saying that the sea life died of natural causes not environmental irresponsibility in addition, other sea life, such as pelicans, have seemingly met their demise due to hunger from water temperatures unsuitable for feeding. Then we have thousands of shellfish found dead in Peru as well. So it says here that thousands of, uh, I'm not even sure how to pronounce those, were found dead off the coast of Lima following the mystery mass death of dolphins and pelicans that Peru. So they're saying that the uh, cause is due to the warming of the Pacific waters in the north of the country, saying that the phenomenon occurs with some frequency. So, And lastly, they say the warmer temperatures led to shrimp-like creatures that usually live far away from the coast to move in closer to land. So, you know, this is such a good scapegoat to say that warmer temperatures and blame it on climate change, right? 
global warming. So it says here, beachcomber warning, mother load of tsunami debris to come. So but it uh, goes on and it says, the Japanese government officially estimates 5 million tons of debris went into the ocean in March of 2011, the tsunami which hit northeast Japan, which is a good chance it was either caused by harp or um, I think I think uh, Benjamin Fulford, well, I know, this is what he said. He said it's due to explosives underwater that, that triggered that tsunami and that, but who knows, right? Even though the government estimates most of it sank, there could be 1.5 billion tons still afloat. So it goes on here. It says that uh, people that find hazardous materials uh, should call the authorities where they're going to call in and set up tents and have mostly, uh, like in uh, the BP, that had mostly blacks down there. Uh, with no respirators or anything telling them that it's safe right that's how they're gonna that's how they're gonna handle it and uh, they're gonna have police intimidating media mainstream media to get away and quarantine the area off that's how it'll work but uh, i think there's actually reports right now of tuna that's coming in that's uh, uh the bad tuna basically with radiation in it so soft bank unveils world's first phone with radiation detection and it goes on and it says the after the Fukushima disaster that uh, citizens in Japan have been especially wary of radiation exposure and it goes on the company said they revealed a new smartphone to answer such concerns it goes on and says that the world's first phone with a built-in Geiger counter capable of measuring radiation levels within 20 percent of accuracy will be available it's called the Pantome 5 but uh, the link will be posted and you can go in there and check it out I mean it's it's kind of like a body scanner in a smartphone. There's a Geiger meter in a smartphone, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's worth reporting after that story. Then next, we have stubborn infection spread by insects. Is it? Is it? The aerosols? Is it? I don't know. But maybe it's the insects. Maybe it's the GMO insects that were released to fight malaria, right? It is called the new AIDS of the America. So great. AIDS was, you know, it was a good thing to help call, uh, uh, you know, part of the black population. Now we have the new AIDS of America back. So, great. Good job for the eugenicists, right? Uh, it says here that uh, this Chagas disease caused by parasites transmitted to humans by blood-sucking insects has been named the new AIDS of America in a lengthy editorial published by P. Los Neglected Tropical Diseases. So it says here that they argue that a dangerous spread of this disease through the hemisphere somewhat resembles the early spread of HIV. It also says that um, it's hard to cure or even impossible to cure. It affects up to 8 million people in the hemisphere, mostly in Bolivia, Mexico, Colombia, and Central America, but more than 300,000, basically a quarter of a million of the infected, live in the United States, many of them immigrants. Victims eventually will develop enlarged hearts or intestines, which can fail or burst, causing uh, sudden death. So... Then we have Illinois Department of Agriculture secretly destroys beekeepers' bees in 15 years of research proving Monsanto's Roundup kills bees. So an Illinois beekeeper, or yeah, Illinois beekeeper with more than a decade's worth of expertise about how to successfully raise organic, chemical-free bees is the latest victim of government tyranny. It says according to Prairie, Prairie Advocate, sorry, uh, Terrence or Terry of Apple River, Illinois, owner of this company, recently had his bees and beehives stolen from the basically the Department of Agriculture for Illinois, as well as more than 15 years worth of research proving Monsanto's Roundup to be the cause of colony collapse disorder. Destroyed, so it's something out of the X-Files. Poland beekeepers kick Monsanto out of the hive, successfully banned bee killing uh, genetically modified corn. So I guess it's a health freedom victory as they're calling it. Uh, where all the plantings on Monsanto's Mon 810 genetically modified variety of maize corn that produces its own built-in BT insecticide and in every kernel has been officially banned. So, and I think in Poland they were real big on uh, uh, protesting internet censorship too, so they actually had some, some pool around there. It says here, Syngenta settles weed killer lawsuit uh, this company agreed to pay $105 million to sell a class action lawsuit in which water utilities in the U.S. Midwest claim that one of the Swiss companies widely used weed killers contaminated water supplies. Well, it's crazy because all the water supplies, if not most of the water supplies, are contaminated in the United States. So by runoff due to these companies and that stuff, and the stuff that's not being put into the water by the um, local uh, water municipalities. So, you know, it's just, it's like everything else when they say that it, 
it's already happening. You know what I mean? It says, oh, every phone call and email could be tracked. Well, it already is, right? What privacy advocates are concerned this could turn into a science fiction novel, um, you know. So it's just, it's just the kind of like I just see, keep seeing the same old stuff again, where it's, you know, it's like, what are you gonna do? You know, I don't know. I guess for me, it's just kind of wait for some kind of opportunity where the crap hits the fan, and maybe we can get some some real change here. But I don't see it happening as long as everything keeps going the way it's going. But that's why I like doing these videos because until then, hopefully, you know, there's some few people that are on the fence were just totally clueless that will all of a sudden be able to kind of put the pieces together and hopefully these videos can do that for them ice cream spot hits rocky road farmers um stand shut by state over alleged permit violation uh but yeah basically unexpectedly was shut down by state officials over the weekend after the stands operator made building improvements at the site without getting permission by the state to improve his private property so you know, and someone asked me, because, you know, I have a military background, I have a bachelor's degree, why don't, you know, why don't you go and work for the, uh, the, um, not the EPA, but, uh, be a conservation police, you know, because I, I was, used to be real big on fishing, and not as many, not as much anymore, but still, I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll go, you know, be a um, conservation police or something, if it's like, no, nah, dude, you know, uh, you know, look at, look at what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to f fuck with people on their off time and their weekends, when they just want to get away from, they're, you know, thinking of their enslavement, you know, their little um, jobs, whatever, whatever, right? And they're going to be on their boat, you know, and they're going to be drinking a beer. And they may not have a fishing license. Well, oh, God, they're going to confiscate your gear. They're going to take away your license. They're going to fine you. I mean, God forbid if that happens. I mean, people used to do it all, all the time 20 years ago, but now I see people that are just like, they're scared shitless to go out and go fishing on a boat without having all the necessary paperwork, right? Because these Gestapo will come armed, environmental police officers showed up at the stand on Friday evening and stood guard throughout the weekend, turning away customers craving uh, these sundaes and basically ice cream. But it says, United Nations creates a new, more powerful global environmental agency. Uh, this is part of the Earth Summit for Rio, where they're going to push this carbon tax to fund their global government like this. And uh, it'll promote a specialized agency with a new title says here that they will prop up the sustainable development, which is population control or reduction, division of the United Nations, the same uh, agency that disseminates Agenda 21 policies, uh, where basically governments will be centralized into a global agency with powerful international backing. So they're dubbing it uh, UNEP, U uh, UN Environmental Program. The next up, uh, just to follow up, House to examine plan for United Nations to regu regulate the Internet. So... So if you talk about the Agenda 21 or the UN, uh, it's, uh, you know, in the U.S. seceding sovereignty to them, well, your conspiracy theorist doesn't exist. So then we have American cage fighter rips out still beating heart of training partner after fearing he was possessed by the devil after he had a tea spike with the hallucinogenic mushrooms. So this is going in line with this. Zombie apocalypse is nigh. Blog post lays out the evidence. So it says this apocalypse is permanently on the lips and keyboards of web users worldwide. Uh, and basically, it says it's one of the firmly entrenched in our collective psyche. That's imprinting. That's mass imprinting for what's going to happen, whatever's going to happen. So these zombie-type stories have been trending on social media in recent weeks, talking about the face eating in Miami, and uh, even in New Jersey, throwing bits of his own entrails, this man, at police officers. Wow, again in Florida, a doctor was arrested and began spitting blood at officers, taking him into custody, also impervious to standard methods of research. And you can check it out. There's a link uh, via Gawker. Then we have this baffling illness strikes Africa, turns children into mindless zombies, says the WHO. It's called the nodding disease, and it brings on seizures, violent behavior in some, debated, personality changes, and the host of un unusual symptoms. Then we have the most dangerous drug in the world, Devil's Breath, chemical from Colombia, can block free will and wipe memory and even kill. Within minutes, victims are like zombies, coherent but with no free will. So they identified... The Miami police have identified the growling cannibal, and they went out and they said, "What? Well, his uncle described his nephew as nice and hardworking man who washed cars at a local dealership. Sounds like the vampire in Florida, where she was, uh, what? They said she couldn't remember what she did. Miami police blame it on drugs, but they don't really know what happened, and they said they compared it to a zombie attack. Oh, and look at this. The University of Miami already has a term. They call it excited delirium. Maybe it's a big psyop. And if you are preparing for a zombie apocalypse, be careful because you might get 20 months in prison for stockpiling destructive devices like what? Ooh, shotguns. But, that, but that's why they're trying to outlaw them. This is Gigi and I'm Darko. Thank you. God bless.